Hi there and welcome to Tech Dredge, a place where we do unboxings, reviews and overviews of various bits of computer hardware. Today I'm looking at G-Skills Ripjaw Z 2400 MHz RAM kit to try and figure out just who needs this level of RAM performance. There are two main factors people take into consideration when buying RAM, well usually, and that's the capacity of the RAM kit measured in gigabytes and the clock speed measured in megahertz. The capacity of the RAM is simply how much information can be stored in memory at any one time and most modern PCs don't have much more than about 8 gigabytes of RAM. The clock speed of the RAM is how many millions of cycles per second the memory can perform. So in super dumbed down terms, this is a contributing factor to how much data can be moved in and out of your RAM at once. Most RAM kits in modern PCs are rated at 1600 MHz or 1600 million cycles per second or at 1333 MHz. The kits are built in speeds of over 3000 MHz with 2400 MHz being the fastest that's commonly used. So in my hands today I have a kit of G-Skills Ripjaw Z memory which has a capacity of 64 gigabytes and a frequency of 2400 MHz. As RAM goes, this is pretty much as good as it gets, which is why it's slightly surprising it comes in an unassuming, eco-friendly, just you know, plain cardboard box with a small G-Skill logo on the top left. Over on the right side you have a little spiel about RMA information and a bigger sticker that states Quad Channel Memory for Intel LGA 2011 Processor and X79 platforms. This is pretty much a given as only X79 supports 8 DIMM slots on the motherboard and there is 8 sticks in here. So you aren't going to physically be able to run all 8 of these in any other platform. Though you will be able to run like, you know, 32 gigabytes in a Z87 board if you are so inclined. So you might have to tweak the settings or underclock the memory to get it to run optimally. So you're pretty safe these days. Uh, on the back of the box you have a lot of stickers. Uh, these here are individual details about each stick in the box and have all of the specica uh, specifications of this particular memory kit. Something which is also repeated on this larger sticker over here. So that's the model number at the top, which I'll link in the video description. Down here you can see that this is DDR3 memory rated at 2400 MHz. And this just says that there are 8, 8 GB sticks in here, so 64 GB all up. So CL11131331. Uh, so these numbers represent the timings of the memory. And from what I understand, this is how many clock cycles it takes for certain things in the memory to become available after it's been requested. The lower the numbers, the less clock cycles for information to become available, and the faster the RAM. So remember, at 2400 MHz, the memory is performing 2400 million clock cycles per second. So real world differences in these timings come down to nanoseconds. The first one, CL11, uh, means the RAM has a CAS latency of 11 and CAS latency is the number of clock cycles between the CPU requesting access to memory and when the requested data is available to be accessed. These other timings do some very specific things and there are even more timings that aren't shown here which you can see in your BIOS. Uh, the higher the clock speed and the capacity the worse these timings can be since the CPU has to work harder and faster to keep up with it all. Uh, so the memory is rated at 1.65 volts which is generally as high as RAM gets out of the factory and for a high speed, high capacity kit it's not really surprising. If you were to underclock, you could almost certainly undervolt your RAM as well. Uh, down here we have a uh, G-Skill seal which I've already broken and the box opens like so to reveal the memory itself. The modules fit in here with little room to spare, a little less room than I would like to see really but there is impact protection on both sides as well as in the middle. Uh, each stick of RAM is contained in a sleeve of white anti-static foam which is a very effective means of protect, yeah, protection from discharge with a little bit of padding between the modules you know, provided during shipping as well. So that's quite good to see. Sliding the RAM out, wow these are gorgeous. That shiny blue aluminum is just really something to behold and you know, couple that with the attractive design of the heat spreader it's just so sweet. It's got that understated aggression and that defines the Ripjaw Z series. It doesn't scream, you know, look at me, but it certainly commands attention. Uh, the teeth, you know, they're more subdued than on, say, the Ripjaw X series. And that's, you know, certainly to my liking, though it's all, of course, subjective. Uh, the black PCB is also nice to see rather than those awful green things you see on cheaper stuff. Uh, not that it affects your performance at all. 
Uh, on the back, you just have a sticker with all the specs on it that I read out before. And it is worth noting that every G-Skill memory kit is validated by hand. So someone has actually tested that this memory all works optimally together. Oh, I love having RAM, just handfuls of RAM. Other bi uh, not, well, one big advantage of this memory kit is that it is a medium profile RAM. At 40 millimeters tall, it isn't properly low profile like the G-Skill Ares, 32 millimeters, but it isn't hugely tall like Corsair Dominator Platinums, which are like 56 millimeters or something. So that improves compatibility with you know, big CPU coolers that might block RAM slots such as like Noctua's and HD14. And value for money is pretty good too. Uh, this is priced significantly less than G-Skill's other 64 gigabyte 2400 MHz kit, which has slightly improved timings and includes fans and all of that. Uh, it's also much cheaper than Corsair Dominator Platinums, though with worse timings. Uh, in Australia, where neither this kit nor Corsair's 64 gigabyte kit is widely available, the price difference is like several hundred dollars in favor of the G-Skill kit, though both kits will most likely have to be special ordered in here. Uh, and this is all backed up by a lifetime warranty, as is pretty much standard with all RAM these days. But what do you need 64 gigabytes of RAM at 2400 MHz for? The short answer is you almost certainly don't. Heavy video editing is a plausible explanation for needing this much memory, and the capacity is certainly nice to have there, though the higher clock speed probably won't make a notable, yeah, noticeable difference. Uh, one awesome thing you can do with this much RAM is you can set up a RAM disk, which is essentially using your RAM like a hard drive to store files. And since RAM is so much faster than hard drives or SSDs, you know, access to these files is more or less instantaneous. Uh, the main drawback being when you turn off your computer, you lose all of the data stored on the RAM disk, and there are ways around that. Uh, but none of them are optimal, and you know, that's a whole different topic. So you might be able to find use for the sheer capacity of this kit, but you know, finding something meaningful use for the extra speed probably isn't going to happen unless you, you know, if you just want the bragging rights, fair enough. It's an amazing kit of RAM. It's something to brag about. Um, the RAM doesn't feature error correcting code, so it's very much for consumer motherboards rather than server or extreme workstation setups. And I think the last thing I have to touch on now is compatibility. As I mentioned before, you can only run all eight modules of this um, at their full speed on the X79 platform, which is the only platform currently out that supports eight RAM sticks. Uh, in addition to this, you need a CPU and motherboard that supports this much RAM running at this high of a speed. So when I emailed G-Skill about the differences in the 2133 MHz kit and this one, uh, they were extremely helpful tech support. Uh, said to me, well, getting 2400 MHz running will all depend on your CPU and your motherboard. And I was like, yeah, I'll be running a 4930K, top of the line, all of that. And the response was, it depends on your individual CPU. It might work out of the box on your CPU. It might have to be tweaked a bit to get it running. So we really recommend the 2133 MHz kit. So I got the 2400 MHz kit and it works flawlessly. Uh, it is worth noting, you do have to enable XMP in your BIOS though to get this running at full speed. There might even be some overclocking headroom if you're game, though I don't think you can get much more out of it. Uh, so on to motherboard compatibility. There are a few X79 motherboards on the market today. So how many do you think are compatible with this particular kit? Five, 10, nope, one. This guy is pretty elitist and is only officially compatible with one motherboard. And that motherboard is the ASUS X79 Deluxe, which I have over there somewhere. You can probably run this on other boards if you underclock it. And since only the highest quality of chips go into a kit that runs 64 gigabyte at 2400 megahertz, if you do underclock to 2133 or lower, you may be able to lower the timings and voltage than if you were to purchase you know, a kit rated at those speeds. And it's uncommon, but some people do buy high speed, high performance memory to get that extra stability or lower timings in an underclock. So that's probably about time to wrap things up. I've babbled on for far too long now. So if you're shopping for a 64 gigabyte kit of RAM, would I recommend the G-Skill Ripjaw Z? Yes, I would. Absolutely no questions asked. G-Skill make excellent memory, and if you are on the market for this level of memory, the performance and stability is amazing. The looks are strikingly good, uh, strikingly good, and I think anyway, and it's a price competitive option, though it's by no means cheap. I wouldn't really recommend a 2400 MHz kit unless you desperately want that. I don't think there's a legitimate need for it. Uh, it's expensive to get the faster kit and it isn't compatible with a wide range of other hardware. I would recommend going with lower speed memory and G-Skill makes various Ripjaw Z kits in 2400, 2133, 1600 uh, and they're available in red, black, blue, 
Um, and they even do a low profile 1333, which is a rather striking orange. That's the airy series. Um, and at other capacities, lower than 64, they have a huge range. And it really is top notch stuff. I can't fault it. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more stuff from Tech Dredge and comment or message me with any questions or dislike the video and give me as much constructive criticism as you want. I'm not a hardware expert or, or a presenter for that matter, so I have a lot to learn, I'm sure. Thanks again for checking us out. Have a good one.